Google's car is, is, is fairly dumb. Uh, the way it works, it pretty much says, okay, I've been exactly here before. I went exactly this way. Let me continue to go exactly that way. Hmm. Um, our car, every time looks around, it's like, okay, if I gave a human this picture, where would they drive the car? Got it. Um, and so when do you think these systems will be able to navigate cities? Because that seems to be a big sort of question is when can a city dweller use them? Um, well, again, uh, Mountain View's a lot easier than San Francisco. Got it. Um, our, I don't talk too much about, about future plans. Got um, it. I'm very focused on our product at the end of this year um, will be a lot more like Tesla Autopilot. I would not recommend using it in a city. Right. Um, we are exploring cities. We're working with a small electric car company, WeGo. Um, they've outfitted. So for a couple things you need for city. Uh, so for highway, you can get away with a forward-facing radar and a forward-facing camera. Uh, which is what our system will be. Right. Um, for cities, you need much more periphery awareness. Yeah. Um, so we want to have a system that has 360 degrees of. What does um, the Tesla have? It has the side, right? It knows barely. It's on the side. Oh, the Tesla lane change is dangerous. Is um, I would not have shipped the Tesla lane change if I was if I was a Tesla because, so it has ultrasonic sensors on the mm -hmm. side. Um, ultrasonic sensors are very short range. Uh, so if you're going 70 miles an hour, you turn on the automatic lane change to turn into the, to go into the left lane, right. but there's a car 30 meters back going 90, you're in trouble, right? Like that's a really bad move to make. Um, so before you can do autonomous lane change, what you really want is uh, radars, is side-facing radars, which will tell you not just if there's a car there, but how fast that car is moving, because that's very important, right? If there's a car 30 meters back going 65 and you're going 70, you can merge. But if that car's going 90, you can't. So it doesn't have reverse sensors no. yet. No, the Tesla has limited ultrasound around it and then a forward-facing radar and a non-color camera. Um, will be a forward-facing radar and a color camera. Right, so the, in, the, in, that case, in that way, the systems are somewhat similar in design. Um, yeah. And what, what could we do in terms of roads to assist this effort? Because it seems to me they put those... Um, those um, those little vibrating sort of bumps in the road. Bots you, dots, yes. What do they call them? Bots dots. Bots dots. Bot invented the epoxy that was used to make the ah, So bots dots. Yeah. Those have seen. Those seem to me to be incredibly effective at keeping you in the lane because you you know yeah, physically yeah. that that's happening. Why don't we have an effort to put something in the road where we could actually define the lane either electronically or in a very precise way? Um, because governments are incompetent. Yeah. I mean, it's not, you can't rely on the government or, or like that requires a big collective action. Yeah. That's not how self-driving cars are going to come into existence. Mm -hmm. The only way that could work is if Google bought Kansas City and replaced all the roads with their, you know, mega Google box. But um, would, if you, is there a device we could put in roads that would actually do that? You don't need to. You, you don't, don't need, need to. to. Uh, AI technology is getting so good that that's not you know, going to help you much. Hmm. Um, Let's talk about AI then. Sure. Explain what impact AI will have on self-driving and when we'll start to see that sort of oh. hit. And to, to bring another, to, yeah. or to point something else out about the lanes, yeah. um, you do not want your intelligence on the road. You want your intelligence in the car mm. because say your intelligence on the road breaks, mm. then your cars will start to do monumentally stupid things. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you have something that's trained in the way our car is trained, with deep learning by watching people drive, it's less likely to ever decide crashing into a wall is a good idea. It's very unlikely to decide. Right. That. Incredibly unlikely. Um, but if you have, like, say you had lane markers along the side of the wall, special wall markers. Right. Two of the wall markers ran out of battery, and the car's like, oh, oh, there's a lane over there. This guy's going slow. Let me get around. And you hit the wall, yeah. right? Or yeah. somebody moves the wall markers and puts them in the middle of the road. Well, yeah. And then it stems in the brake. I mean, you could yeah. have wacky stuff like that happen. Yeah, so it's just not a good way to do it. Look at the way people drive cars and try to mimic that. Stop trying to invent a new way of driving. Right. I mean, that's fine if you're going to rebuild all the roads. But sure. that's a hopeless project. What about this project of having the cars be able to communicate with each other? Hopeless. Oh. People talk, about, people talk about vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. It's the most absurd thing ever. Have you ever tried to pair uh, you know, a phone with a car using Bluetooth and what a disaster that is? Yeah, it takes That's about 20 minutes. Yeah. It does. Oh, okay, well, let me connect to that car up there and let me see if he's always oh, hitting the brakes. Oh, no, no, pairing, pairing, and you crashed, right? Yeah. It's hopeless. Um, you want vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication? I'll give you vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. The guy in the front hits the brakes. 
the brake lights turn on, and my camera sees the brake lights. Vehicle done. to vehicle communication. We're Look done. At that. Look it at that. Works. We're done. Easy. Let me tell you about one of my favorite services in the world. It's called Squarespace. 10 years ago, five years ago, I used to have to go hire a consultant to build a website, and it took months and it cost thousands and thousands of dollars. And then when I needed a new feature or I opened it up on my iPhone, it looked terrible. And my whole life revolved around trying to make a beautiful website and I had to spend literally thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars doing that. And then I found out about Squarespace. And if you want to create a beautiful website, landing page, website, or online store. You can do it on Squarespace for literally just dollars a month. I can't believe how affordable it is. And it's state-of-the-art tech, secure, stable, trusted by millions of people. Some of the most respected brands in the world use it, and I use it for every site. Why? It's beautiful, responsive, and they keep adding features. This is one of the great things about the software as a service movement that you've heard me talk about on our show. They are sitting there with you know, all of these customers, Squarespace, and then they say, oh, customers, what else do you want? And because they have so many customers, they can build feature after feature, but not raise the price. So it, it's like you're buying the service. It's like if you bought a car and they just kept adding features to it. Every day you got in your car, there was a new feature. That's what it feels like using Squarespace to me. You can go start a free trial right now. No credit card is required. You can get a free domain if you, start up, if you sign up for a year. So that's a great deal. And when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, use the offer code TWIST, T-W-I-S-T, and you get 10% off your first purchase. I know that many of you don't need to get 10% off your first purchase. You're rich, you're baller, you're expensing this. But please, use the promo code TWIST so they know that you're a, a super fan of the show. And go ahead, if you really are a super fan of the show, thank at Squarespace on Twitter for making independent media like This Week in Startups possible. It's just a great product. It's a great service. And all of my team knows how to use it. And we can pop up websites all the time for the Launch Incubator, for the Launch Festival, for the Scale Conference. Everything we do, I just pop up a new website, pop up a new website, and it looks beautiful. And then I said to my team, hey, can we put a video? I saw somebody put a video in the background of their website. And I thought, that's incredible. You go to a website and it's playing a video in the background? Gorgeous. I want that. And they're like, oh, Squarespace does that. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? They're like, well, we didn't know because they keep adding so many damn features to this product. I said, great. Put on the Launch Angel Summit a picture of Napa. So they bought some stock footage for 50 bucks, and the website looks dynamite. For $50 in stock photos or stock video, we put this gorgeous video up. Amazing. And it keeps happening to me. I just love Squarespace. Thank you so much for sponsoring This Week in Startups. I really appreciate it. It means a lot that you guys and gals have been building this great product for so many years and supporting my podcast for so many years. Thank you, Squarespace. Okay, let's get back to this amazing program.